Hi guys, Mr. Johnny here again, another quick video from me. If you saw my last video, that is a little uh, short video about this voltage regulator, which does absolutely nothing. I came up with a little circuit that will replace, that will be a perfect replacement, which will actually work. That's the important part right there. It's right here right here you can see this has nothing to do with it that's all it is an SCR and a handful of discrete parts actually this capacitor and this resistor is for testing purposes only it's to um, mimic a battery mimic a fully charged battery for me to set up the maximum voltage right so let me first show you the setup, how it's, how I do this to test it out. I have a transformer which kind of replaces the alternator right here. It produces uh, AC voltage, steps down mains voltage to save value, plus I can now touch it because it is galvanically isolated. Low AC voltage, that's what we want, we I use a transformer for that. This uh, regulator is a shunting voltage regulator. Shunting means it's gonna pretty much produce a short circuit or a state very close to that. And for that, that will upset the transformer a little bit. It's gonna be angry about it. That's why I have this light bulb in series to limit the current. So the transformer will be happy and the voltage regulator ain't gonna mind because the alternator used in scooters and the motorcycles um, is a mag is an alternator with permanent magnets. It it requires no external excitation. It is excited by permanent magnets on the rotor in the in, uh, physically embedded in the rotor. So it uh, requires no excitation, which is good. So you can just all you need is to just rotate it and here you go it produces power but the disadvantage is you have no control over the output voltage whether with an alternator in car you have an excitation winding which basically is a electromagnet and controlling the current through that winding you can control the amount of power that generator the alternator produces here you can do that that's why you short it out if you have excessive amount which may sound ridiculous like what you just short it out when doesn't this waste power well the interesting feature of that alternator with permanent magnetic excitation is that it has a high leakage inductance and that high leakage inductance is actually very beneficial here because when you short it out like dead short like take the wires from the generator and short them out like that just twist them together the generator yes it will pump a significant quite a significant current through itself but it's but it ain't gonna self-destruct because the leakage inductance is gonna limit the current to the safe ish value yes the current is gonna be quite high but it ain't gonna be obscene amount and the generate and the alternator sorry will work in that state just fine it's gonna heat up a little bit but in the scooter in the motorcycle it's bolted to the actual engine and it can sink the heat from itself to the engine case so it's not gonna be a problem that's the way other regulators work so do not blame me for the <laughs> Like the strange idea. This generate. Well, God damn it. Whew. This regulators, shunting regulators, has been used for a while, for a while on these kind of applications, and they proved themselves good for the application. They work. What was inside this voltage regulator is nothing but the diode. So that's it. I wasn't mumbling for way too large amount of time let's throw a voltmeter across this capacitor 
which mimics a fully charged battery. And I'll show you that it is about 14.4 volts or so. Okay, plugged in, you can see the light bulb glowing, flickering, because it is only ha one half wave, and the voltage is about 14.46, something like that. It's not very crucial. Yes, the battery is gonna guess a little bit, but you know what? This is gonna be a heck of a lot better than just a simple diode instead of the any kind of voltage regulator. So that's good. And to prove that this scene in, indeed does something, I can just go and take, disable a CR by pulling this resistor. The light bulb goes off because there is no load, no shunting action anymore. And if I probe across the capacitor, I'll see the peak voltage, which is over 18 volts. So yeah, it works. Surprise. And since I have the scope running in the background, let's show you the waveform across an SCR. Uh, what's gonna be above the zero volt line is gonna be positive voltage. What's gonna be uh, below is gonna be negative. In this circuit, the positive half cycle is what charges the cell, the battery. The negative half cycle does not do anything for the battery, it just provides power for the headlight and tail light. Connection, where are you? God damn it. Okay, here you can see that voltage starts at zero, it rises, rises, rises to the value that the transistor turns on, the SCR, because voltage is too high, transistor there turns on, turns on SCR, it shunts it, shunts it out and the voltage drop on the SCR in that state is about a volt or a half volt or 1.5 volts, it depends on the current through the device and it stays on until the voltage crosses zero, because the current drops to zero, SCR go, turns off and it does not do anything for the negative half cycle and that's fine. The light bulbs are gonna be still fine, they ain't gonna burn out. So this voltage regulator does two things. It protects the light bulbs from burning out and it simultaneously protects the battery from overcharging, which is good. And I'm gonna, after showing my schematic, I'm gonna show you the schematic that the other factory-made Chinese devices use and explain the flaw in that schematic. Okay, here is the schematic of my unit and where the heck is a pencil? Okay, this is an alternator winding, one end of which is reference to chassis, so it's ground. By doing this, we effectively cannot easily go and rec full way rectify this and charge the battery like that because the battery negative is also referenced to the chassis so there is no way we can use a bridge for that so yeah that's why it is only one halfway rectified by this diode and the actual regulator is this portion right here which is very simple it contains an SCR which gonna shunt out the positive only positive half cycle out, which is adequate to protect from overcharge of the battery and at the same time is perfectly adequate to protect the light bulbs in the headlight and tail light from burning out because the gen alternator produces excessive voltage. So how the circuit works? When the voltage rises, as you saw to some point, the current starts flowing through the through this diode, only positive half cycle, because we don't, SCR cannot control the negative half cycle here, so we have no need to employ the full wave rectification right here. Positive half cycle like that, current goes in through this diode, through the base emitter junction, if the voltage is big enough, through this resistor, 12 volt zener, that is again. When, if the voltage is big enough. If it's not, 
it's obviously ain't gon the zener ain't gonna break down there will be no base current there will be no collector current to turn the CR on but if the voltage is high enough it f the current flows like this through the 12 volt zener which broke down and through this forward biased LED which I threw in because with this 12 volt zener the voltage was too low for the battery to charge properly this resistor is there first to make sure that when the transistor is off the base is not floating in the breeze when the zener is not conducting and it also gives you some freedom by changing its value I'm gonna put an asterisk right here whoops by changing this value this 11k resistor you can adjust the voltage to a certain degree by making it lower you can raise the voltage by making it higher you can lower the voltage that the battery is gonna be having on the full charge so that's very simple as you see nothing fancy about it now I'm gonna draw a schematic of the commercial unit and explain to you why it sucks here it is yes the schematic looks like shit but it's actually fair because it is shit it performs like shit okay now God damn it. Uh, I have no pencil anymore to point. <laughs> Same stuff. Alternator winding, but it is tapped. I do not. There is a tap on this alternator too, but I do not use it. It doesn't really. This my circuit does not need it. That, let's put it that way. It needs only three wires chassis, alternator, battery positive. This requires four. And it looks like this. We ain't gonna go into this section. Really. It does the same stuff. If the voltage is big enough, right here, the transistor is gonna turn on, turn on the SCR, which is gonna turn on and shunt the shunt the one half cycle out. But the important thing is, look which half cycle it's gonna shunt out. The battery charges when this is positive with respect to this end so god damn it i have no pencil now to draw with oh man god damn it i need to go get it okay so this end is positive this end is negative that's when the battery is going to be charged the current will flow like that through the diode into the battery and into the chassis and return back to this end of the winding good but you know what will happen this battery is going to overcharge just just fine because the cr is going to limit the negative half cycle so the voltage is going to look like this something like that and it will that's a zero volt line right there and the voltage is going to raise to some amount and the scr is going to turn on it will have a little drop like that and back to the positive half cycle this half cycle is what charges the battery and this is what is where the is the half cycle the SCR turns on turn SCR shunts out so that's an ultimate recipe for the battery over to overcharge and I run out of memory in the card, so that's that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, see ya.